right? So we have regular insulin, known as Humulin R or Nobulin R. It's really important for you guys to know those names as well. It'll have the R in front of it, so that'll let you know that it's a regular insulin. They have is Aspart and Lispro. Those also have Huma but, or Nova, but it ends in Log. So I always call these Logs, right? And then you have your NPH, that's also Humulin or Nobulin, but it has the letter N in front of it, so that's how you know it's NPH. And then you have your Glargin. So again, I, I use the metaphor of like, uh, the regular is like a Corvette. We all know that a Corvette is fast, it's sexy, we know that. And Aspart and Lispro, they're very similar to that, except it's a Ferrari. I don't know if that's how you spell Ferrari or not, but it's a Ferrari, right? So we know that both of them are sports vehicles, they're both fast, but we know that a Ferrari is faster. So regular insulin is fast, Aspart and Lispro, it's even faster. NPH is known as your intermediate acne. Those also have humulin, no humulin, but it's an N. And then you have your glargin. This is your long acne, this has no peak. Now, when it comes to your insulins, you have to know these things right here. The onset, the peak, and the duration. That's the most important thing. To be quite frank with you guys, duration is nice to know. That means it's not 100% imperative, but your onset and your peak is super important, okay? You need to know onset because that lets the patient, that's, that, that lets you know when the patient should eat. If the, if the insulin begins its onset within a specific time frame, then you should give them the food within that time frame because otherwise when it's beyond that, the glucose starts going down because of the insulin. And then your peak time is the most important thing you guys need to know. The time frame lets you know when the blood sugar is gonna potentially drop. And that's called an insulin reaction, where it's called a hypoglycemic event. They use different, those phrases to describe the same event, right? So when it comes to regular insulin, you should know that the onset is anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes. That means that we have about 30 to 60 minutes to give the patient their food when they are uh, receiving the regular insulin. For Aspart Lispro, remember that's a Ferrari, right? It's a little bit faster. It's still a sports car, but it's just a little bit faster. And your Ferrari's um, onset is about 15 to 30 minutes. It's significantly faster. And so again, you have to give your patient the, their meal within that time frame. Understand that depending on what book you guys read, it might give you a slight variation in this time frame. I've seen some books that say that, uh, I believe it's uh, Aspart could be as low as 10 minutes in, the, in its onset, but the concept is still the same. You still have a very short time frame. Does that make sense, folks? Um, when it comes to your onset of NPH, this one is usually two to four hours meaning it doesn't start working until that time frame. However, you still have to know that because you might have to give somebody food within that time frame, okay? We'll talk about the in just a bit. Your peak time, this is the most important thing. We can have a, hypo, a hypoglycemic event or a, uh, an insulin reaction. Again, those are the same phrases that it uses when it's describing that the blood sugar might drop. Your peak time for regular is anywhere from two to four hours, okay? This is what time, oh, I'll just talk about all of it, I'll explain it all. Your Aspart and Lispro, the peak time, check this out. It's 60 to 90 minutes. Okay, and again, some books might give you a slight variation on that. Go by whatever your school tells you to go by. Usually ATI gives you ranges very similar to these, okay? And then your NPH, your peak is somewhere from six to 10 hours. And in some books, it might give you up to 12 hours. Just understand that the peak is significantly longer, uh, later on the peaks for the other ones, right? Your glargin has no peak, and it lasts up to 24 hours in some cases. You also have medications known as Lente or Ultra Lente. It's the same thing, uh, classification of insulin. So the reason why this is important is because if this right here is showing you the strength of the insulin, one being very weak, five being moderately strong, and then 10 at its peak effect, and then this right here is your time frame. So if you give a patient, uh, let's say you give them regular insulin right here at 7 a.m., at what time would you have to feed them? 7.30. By 7.30 the latest, because that's when the, that's when the uh, onset begins to take its effect, right? What if you gave the same insulin, regular insulin, right? But um, you gave it at 7 a.m., but you're gonna get a question that says, at what time would you reassess the patient? At what time would you check for a hypoglycemic event? At what time would you expect an insulin reaction? Meaning, it's asking about the peak. So the peak is two, uh, for regular insulin, it's two to four hours. If we gave it at seven, 
At what time would you reassess the patient? Nine. At nine. nine. From nine to? Eleven. That's correct. Nine, 10, 11. That's the two to four, well, roughly that, that time, right? And so that's when you would check it. That's why these time frames are really important because it lets you know when to recheck the patient. Does that make sense, guys? Yes. 